Well, in an article by Israel National News, Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danyan, has stated that uh, Iran has uh, formed an army of 82,000 combatants in Syria, including a core of 3,000 Revolutionary Guard troops, uh, thousands of Hezbollah uh, terrorists, and allied militias. And in him speaking, he says, We are releasing this classified information because it is vital for the world to understand that if we turn a blind eye in Syria, the Iranian threat will only grow. Today, there are 82,000 fighters under Iran's authority in Syria. This includes 3,000 members of Iran's infamous uh, Revolutionary Guard, 9,000 fighters from Iran's proxy Hezbollah, and 10,000 members of violent Shia militias uh, recruited from across the Middle East, including Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. In addition, Iran also directly commands 60,000 local Syrian fighters. And you know, if the truth is known, that number probably is over 100,000. And you can bet that number is going to grow as time goes on and as the world continues to ignore the threat that Iran is posing in Syria. And you know, that's why this next article is uh, not a shock to me at all. From coming out of the Jerusalem Post, it says, Arab leaders, we can resume peace talks despite Jerusalem controversy. Frankly, Arab leaders are terrified at this growing army that is coming up out of Syria uh, that is under Iran's command. And here's what the article says. It says, Arab leaders in Davos expressed optimism Wednesday about the possibility of renewing Israeli-Palestinian peace negotiations despite controversy over the recent U.S. decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. King Abdullah II of Jordan uh, told Mavriv during the Davos conference that following U.S. President Donald Trump's announcement and intention to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, he would rather see the glass half full and focus on relations with Israel and how these ties can promote peace. But really the truth is, is that, like I said, they're terrified of Iran and what is going to happen in the future. The king said that renewing the, ne the negotiations is dependent on goodwill expressed by both parties. He also added that he would uh, prefer to remain optimistic. Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs Abdel bin Ahmed al Jubair told the same uh, media station that we must wait for the American initiative and that if it, if it will, will have com components that both parties can accept. It will be possible to renew negotiations despite the current crisis surrounding the Trump statement. So don't think for a second that this uh, U.S. peace initiative is over. Virtually all of the Arab world wants the, the U.S. peace initiative to go forward, with Israel included, because they know that the United States and Israel pose the greatest sense of security that uh, the Middle East can have. And without the U.S. and Israel, there's no getting rid of Iran. But you know, at the same meeting, uh, U.S. President Donald Trump also reiterated that there will be no aid until the uh, Palestinians come back to the negotiating table. And on top of the hundred and plus million dollars that they uh, have withheld so far, there would be other payments that would also be withheld. In fact, Mr. Trump went a step further at that meeting. He said that Jerusalem was off the table. And when somebody tried to ask him a question regarding what he meant, he said, next question. He also went on to say that uh, we have a proposal for peace, he said. It's a great proposal for the Palestinians. I think it's a very good proposal for Israel, notably differentiating how the two sides might perceive the deal. It covers a lot of things we've, uh, over the years, discussed and agreed on, he added. He also repeated a point he'd made before that Israel would have to uh, pay for the Jerusalem recognition. Uh, apparently, with a major concession, that would be enticing to the Palestinians and advance their aspirations. The fact of the matter is, is that there were never any deals that came close because you, you could never get past Jerusalem. I helped them because I've taken it off the table. That was the toughest issue, he said. And, you know, that feeds into what the Bible does say in Zechariah 12.3, that Jerusalem would be a trembling cup and a burdensome stone. The president closed by expressing hope he could get the two sides to reconcile 
ending over 100 years of conflict and violence. If that did happen, he said, the glory would rest on his own shoulders. I think eventually very sound minds, I hope sound minds, are going to prevail. And it would be a very great achievement of mine. Well, you know, I can reiterate one thing, and that is, is that the Bible still says that somehow, some way, that the European Union would, in the end, bring about this peace accord that would be between Israel and many. And it's certainly going to be interesting to see how in the world that does end up in the European Union's court and with Israel agreeing to it. Because you have to remember, they don't even mention, the Bible doesn't even mention the Palestinian state or the Palestinian Authority. It just says in Daniel 9, 25-27, that this would be a peace with many that would include Israel. And you know, something else that's also prominently mentioned is that it would be a seven-year peace accord. Now, whether or not that will be stated in the peace process that will come in the future is unknown. It may only be known that it will be seven years by the Lord himself. It may only be mentioned in the Bible because the, the tribulation period is slated to last seven years. But the one thing we do know is this right here is that the United States is still in control of this peace process. And we'll certainly have to keep watching to see how in the world the European Union makes its way to center stage uh, and usurps the authority of the Trump administration. But you know, the one thing I'm looking at right now is this right here is that the Arab world has still not given up on the United States. They still want to see what the total plan does entail. And, you know, as I reported on my latest prophecy news headlines on my website, that uh, French President uh, Macron says he well, will not recognize Palestine in response to Trump's Jerusalem move. In fact, he's telling Mr. Abbas that you need to hear what Mr. Trump's initiative is all about first before you're jumping to conclusions. So all the indications right now coming from out of the European Union and also from the Arab nations indicates that they are all wanting to hear and see what this plan that Mr. Trump uh, has and can offer both the Palestinians and the Israelis. Oh, and one more thing. Mr. Netanyahu put one more stick in the eye of the Palestinians. It says Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed on Thursday that Israel would retain control over Jerusalem's holy sites in any peace deal while ensuring complete religious rights for those of all faiths. His comments came amid speculation over the, con the, the content of U.S. Donald Trump's peace plan. He says that we're keeping the holy sites and the status quo, and I want to stress that under any arrangement that uh, we have, we will always keep the status quo at the Temple Mount and all the holy sites. Our position is that Jerusalem should remain united under Israel's sovereignty with complete religious rights for those of all faiths. Well, if one thing, of course, is uh, going to play out in the years to come, uh, maybe even sooner, is that uh, Israel will have to have its own holy site in the uh, form in the form of a temple uh, on the holy site, the Temple Mount, um, before the midway point of the tribulation period. And I guess that's something else that we're going to have to keep an eye on and see exactly how that's going to play out. Well, one thing's for sure, uh, U.S. President Donald Trump has taken this peace process farther than anyone thought he would, and it doesn't seem to be over yet. You know, the only question is, is will he see it through its end? From this peace process, will there be uh, nine other nations who will converge with the United States or whomever who will form this ten-nation kingdom that the Bible talks about in both Revelation and also in Daniel? Well, nobody really knows the answer to that question right now. That very well may be left up to be formed after the rapture takes place and just before the starting of the tribulation period. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like this video if, in fact, that was something that was informative to you. And uh, if you know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. 150,000 people will die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord today. Allow him to save you. And you Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Uh, there, go down to the description section. There is a link that you can, you can take, and it will take you to the site in which you can get either the free version, which is written in nine different languages, accessible to 4.55 billion people for free, or you can purchase the English version and personally hand it to your lost friend or loved one.
Now you don't, you simply don't want to have your lost friend or loved one taught by the world as to how they need to react when the tribulation period begins. So I would encourage you to make this step and uh, go ahead and get this uh, book and get it in their hands. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.